It's very thrilling to meet so many people interested in paper at the same time. So I'm glad to join in. Uh, and thank you to this great organization that you're setting up. Uh, I will share right now. Um, this is not a, a, a recent um, study on Montesquieu, but uh, I'm glad to share it because uh, it was kind of a case study that uh, really fits in with the theme of uh, today's uh, Congress. So I will talk about the mobility of the paper medium and dynamics of writing um, in Montesquieu's draft. So the main points of my presentation are uh, referring to um, codicology applied to modern and contemporary drafts, uh, the importance of uh, studying working habits and skills of uh, Montesquieu and his secretaries, uh, the uh, problems arise when you try to identify paper types, uh, paper used by a writer uh, in his production. So how to uh, combine production data and uh, modalities of use. Uh, so the main uh, points will be the database methodology uh, with Muse, uh, the paper identification and dating problems, uh, taking L'Esprit des Lois as a case study, uh, because there is this mobility of the author between Bordeaux and Paris. And uh, finally, how paper was used for drafts, uh, which means that writing is uh, setting paper in motion. So applying codicology to modern and uh, contemporary drafts um, is a way of approaching the modern draft as artifact and uh, the activity of writing or composing as a, a craft, actually, from a material analysis point of view. Uh, this oh. was, at the time, a new methodology uh, to support research in literary genetics. So the, uh, the research on um, composition of work by studying the drafts. Of course, the textual archives, the drafts themselves, are uh, incomplete archives. And also we are facing scarce paper history resources for the modern and contemporary uh, period. So we had to build our own tools since we didn't have, for instance, watermark uh, repertoire for uh, modern times. Uh, and we also were in a situation where we couldn't have um, access to physics or chemistry analysis. So uh, we decided at the time that it was possible to identify papers just by looking at them, which is quite a challenge. Uh, so I started uh, working 30 years ago in inventory of paper types and their use in several corpus, mainly French literary or scientific authors in 18th to 20th century. So I, I published about it, so I will not go on. So um, if you take 18th century situation for a writer, uh, what is what kind of paper does he or she has access to? And how is it used? Has is this paper used? As you can see in this painting, folding and piling up and throwing away are gestures or are actions that are really part of the writing setting of the writing scene. Um, so if we want to look towards a practical history of intellectual work, uh, such as been developed by Christian Jacob in Lieu de Savoir, Les Mains de l'Intellect, The Hands of the Intellectual, um, we uh, may approach drafts and letters of Charles-Louis de Montesquieu, um, major polit political and, and, and historical uh, philosopher of the 18th century. Um, so his drafts are kept in, the, the main uh, part of his drafts are kept in Bibliothèque Nationale de France and Bibliothèque Municipale de Bordeaux. And it is, it was the problematic for publishing a new edition of L'Esprit des Lois uh, some 10 years ago was to uh, uh, study uh, the interaction of the hands of the author and the secretaries on the drafts. 
and to reconstruct the phases, the stages of work, because this uh, work has been, he worked on it, he wrote it over 14 years. And uh, so when it was published in first edition in 1748, um, we have all the, the leftovers also of parts of the work that he didn't, uh, that didn't fit in the final publication. So um, one of the uh, formal approach to, to or in, in, in philology is to study, uh, uh, of course, the, the kind of paper by, by uh, the production data and uh, observation of the sheets. And uh, also in the 18th century, as you can see on the lower left, uh, you begin to have a lot of written information in word marks. Uh, so this comes from a royal decree, a series of royal decrees in uh, 1739 and 1741, uh, who compelled the paper makers to, um, to explicitly uh, um, f feature the name of the paper maker, the mill, the, the region, the quality of paper, and the date of making in the watermark, which is, of course, very, very useful for the historian. But uh, it's not enough, of course, to figure out which are the different papers and where they come from. Uh, we identified so far, 190 different paper types in the works of Montesquieu, not in, and in um, L'Esprit des Lois, only 50 different types. And um, also, we are, of course, uh, studying the, the data concerning the use, as I said, which is something that was not done so much by, by uh, paper historians so far, that were more uh, busy with production data, uh, history of the mills, etc., technology. So um, the, the paper support found in the draft are, of course, altered. They're not the full sheet. The sheet is cut, it's pasted, it's turned over, it's folded in many ways. Uh, during the composition process. So uh, it is part of our work to, uh, in the inventory, to anal analyze those operations in order to uh, um, reconstruct the or original sheets in order to be able to compare. So the MUSE database uh, was uh, started in uh, 2000 with my colleague Serge Linkes. Uh, and it's now accessible on CNRS platform Humanum. It's devoted to the inventory of paper types use, used in 17th to 20th century manuscripts. By type of paper, uh, I'm, I mean a virtual gathering of all the sheets that are produced with a single pair of molds. Okay, this is, this is an idea that is not really proper for the maybe for the paper maker because actually he changes his mold as they uh, they get um, uh, worn worn out and so for him the category is the sort of paper that he 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 produces it's not a category either uh, for uh, the watermark uh, people who study watermarks because they're interested in the iconography and dating. But which is the link between the two actually is the different types that are produced by different molds. So if you overlook this aspect, you, you completely uh, get lost actually in, in the different pieces of paper. So in the database, we are using this as the main uh, unit of study, and uh, we have 1,400 types, different types of paper for this period. The description protocol is very um, usual. It follows uh, some of the um, um, uh, instructions of uh, IPH, but actually we built up our database before the IPH was uh, was uh, publishing his standards, and then 
early times uh, of our work. And uh, so we, we study uh, technique, uh, we describe the paper as uh, according to the technique, laid and wolf, the color, the dimensions, thickness, rugosity, water break, distance between chain lines, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And of course, we now take photos, which was not so easy uh, 30 years ago, but now it's become a very handy uh, tool for identification of paper. We also try, of course, to identify the paper maker. We have few um, reference book for that, uh, for the 18th or 19th century, but um, still we are doing our best. And uh, also, uh, what is a feature of the database is that we have a list of all the detailed sheets that have that occur uh, from for each type. So uh, we have a list for each author. We have a list of all the paper types he used, and for each type, we have the list of all the manuscripts where this uh, type can be found. Still, there are, uh, of course, identification and dating problems. Um, in uh, Montesquieu's uh, bibliography, uh, they are, among others, the early uh, work on the material aspects is due to uh, Robert Shackleton, um, who tried to use the watermark and the philology uh, uh, reference at that time, the methodology, to describe uh, to describe paper. The only problem was that he never uh, associated marks and countermarks, which is in 18th century paper, just a mistake. In French paper, you have the two uh, signs, sometimes three. Um, and if you uh, take separately all the marks and all the countermarks, then you have many more different papers than actually were used. So missing this basic criteria uh, really failed uh, the purpose of his study. So um, as we know in, in 18th century drafts or letters, uh, the sheets are mostly folded in quarto or even in octavo. Uh, and so the, the whole sheets are rare. And uh, of course, to, to be able to describe the full sheet is, the, the the important thing to to be uh, to make sure that you have the proper uh, dimensions etc uh, so it is a difficulty that you have to reconstruct uh, abstractly the, the the full sheet by describing parts and combining recognizing which parts go together which mark and countermark go together so uh, you need a very detailed description to get to that uh, uh, aim. Um, in the 18th century, as I mentioned earlier, of course you have written information, the name, as you see here, Aduma, uh, and sometimes the date, uh, but you have to know uh, that uh, some uh, resources uh, to interpret properly those, those watermarks are sometimes missing. Uh, for instance, we know perfectly that uh, the dates mentioned in uh, watermarks may be false. Uh, for instance, in France, 1742 is the first application of a 741 decree, and uh, it remained in use by the paper makers for 20 or 30 years. So maybe paper produced in the 1762 uh, or 64 has 70 uh, 42 as, as a date in it. So you have to be aware of this, uh, these tricks of the paper makers uh, to, to actually um, interpret uh, those data. Um, also, uh, so, so that, well, so that the, 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 the best method is comparing, of course, dated papers to undated papers with ha which have the same paper type. Uh, in L'Esprit des Lois, uh, so as I said, it was written for 14 years and uh, Montesquieu alternatively lived in Paris and Bordeaux and uh, he, in both places, he had uh, secretaries working for him and preparing the stocks of paper. So of course they bought the paper locally available. Um, 
we have to know that in dr such drafts, each folio is used on several working sessions. So the main, the first user may be the author, but it could also be a secretary when the when Montesquieu asks him to copy something, or when he dictates uh, something to him. So um, when he traveled from Paris to Bordeaux, he carried these drafts with him. Uh, but uh, the question is, did he carry also a blank paper? Uh, this doesn't really make sense since he had blank paper prepared for him in both places. We have to know that Auvergne was the main region providing Paris uh, at the time and that Perigord paper actually traveled through Bordeaux, which was the harbor for export. So, uh, of course, local um, um, paper was of those different reg regions in each city. Uh, tracing the origin of paper, thanks to the watermarks, uh, allowed us to test the hypothesis that the first use of a choir for draft was a local use, either by the author or by the secretary. So cross-checking uh, local origin of paper types with the different hands uh, allowed us to draw a chronology of uh, secretaries to uh, identify where they were working and to uh, draw the, the chronology of writing, actually. Um, if we take a broader view of, of this kind of questions, uh, we have to take into account, of course, the way of using the paper for drafts at the time. And actually, what seems to be a solid archives with huge amounts and piles of paper becomes a, a choreography of paper when you realize that paper moved from uh, Paris to Bordeaux, that it moved from the hands of the author to the secretaries and back. Uh, so uh, it's a very uh, different picture of the, the, um, uh, the, the traditional view of archives when you study, we start studying paper in details. Um, so I will not go in details. I see my time is almost over. So uh, I will not go over in details about the, the general use of paper at that time. But um, the main conclusions are that the, um, the material inventory of paper, for instance, uh, 50 types here in L'Esprit des Lois, um, allowed us to describe the composition process as a mobilization of paper, mobilization uh, movement uh, performance. Identifying paper's local origin from Auvergne and from Perigord reveals where each square was used in first and which helps determine the chronology of uh, Montesquieu's secretaries. Also paying attention to transformations of the sheet enhances the lability and handiness of the medium that is defining the writing activity as uh, setting paper in motion. Thank you for your attention.